So now that we have a good grounding knowledge on what characteristics define viruses and how viruses were discovered, we're going to continue our study of virology by looking next at what we would consider the virus components. What makes up a virus? So we'll write virus components as the title of our next flowchart on virology. So how is a virus built? What does it contain within it? Well, all viruses are going to contain genetic material. So we'll first write that the fact that viruses must have, and they all do have, genetic material of some sort. And this genetic material is usually in the form of, or is always actually in the form of nucleic acids. In the form of nucleic acids. So genetic material is a must and all viruses do have this. Now in terms of which type of genetic material they have, we've mentioned this already but I'll reiterate that the genetic material is more specifically going to be either DNA or, or not and, or RNA. Never both. It is never a combination. It's either DNA or RNA. Now, DNA itself can be double-stranded or single-stranded. RNA itself can be double-stranded or single-stranded. It's weird. Uh, but what we see with viruses is the fact that they can have double-stranded or single-stranded uh, genetic material. And it all depends on the virus. So we'll say double-stranded or single-stranded, DS or SS, uh, genetic material depending on virus type. So different viruses have different types of strandedness. Um, it's all dependent on which one you're looking at. Same thing with whether or not it's DNA or RNA. In addition, the shape, the morphology of the genetic material also varies because this shape can be either linear, the genetic material itself can be linear, it may be circular, or it may also be segmented. Now, if the genetic material has this shape, this linear shape, or this circular shape, or this segmented shape, it will affect the way that the virus works. And so we'll say that it has a linear, circular, or segmented genome. Okay? And this is something we'll go back to when we look at the different viral replication techniques, specifically the idea of circular genetic material. In addition, in terms of how much genetic material viruses have, they typically have somewhere between 3 and 100 genes. That's it. That's all they need. They need only 3 to 100 genes, and this is going to represent and be capable as all the info needed. And it's amazing to me to think that it's only 3 to 100 genes necessary um, and needed to replicate in a host cell, to completely take over the host cell machinery to replicate in HC, which we will call host cell. So only 3 to 100 genes necessary. The HIV virus has something like 8, maybe 9 genes, and that's going to cause the devastating effects that HIV does to people who are infected by it. So that's a very powerful thing to understand about the genetic material that viruses all contain. Now, another component that all viruses have is a capsid. So this genetic material doesn't just flow around and float haphazardly in the world. It is contained within something. And that something that contains the genetic material is known as the capsid, or in other words, a nice protein coat. So we have this nice protein coat. It's protecting and it surrounds our genetic material. It serves as sort of the vesicle the carrier of our genetic material so that the genetic material doesn't just float around and it's encapsulated in something so it surrounds our genetic material. In addition, the capsid is not just one large piece. It actually is many small subunits. It's many small pieces. It's a large protein, not a large protein, but let's say a, a collection of uh, subunits. So we'll say it consists of subunits. And what are the subunits of a capsid? They are very simply called capsomeres. So just like, let's say, a monosaccharide is the 
unit and the subunit of a large sugar. A capsomere is the small subunit of a larger capsid. So many capsomeres build up next to each other and expansively to create a protein coat called the capsid. So these are our protein subunits. Now, the capsid itself is important because it determines, it physically determines the shape of the virus. And the shape of the virus, again, is dependent and specific on the type of virus that we are looking at and studying. So the shape is going to be influenced by how the capsomeres arrange themselves to give us this larger protein coat that surrounds our genetic material. And again, because this is the outside of the virus, it's typically going to be the outer portion, it's going to and may eventually actually play a role in a, an important part of the viral process, and that is a role in the attachment that a virus has to the host cell. That's something that we'll go over a little bit later. So it may play a role in attachment. So final point uh, about these two things, uh, I'm going to put a star next to both of them, and I'm going to uh, just put a star over here to explain one small point about this genetic material and capsid. Um, at minimum, at the bare minimum, all viruses have these, okay? All viruses must have these two components, genetic material and protein coat. But what happens is other viruses have evolved what we would consider, let's say, accessory components. So this will not have a star next to it because not all viruses have genetic uh, have these accessory components um, that we'll look at. And we're going to be looking at one accessory component. It's the major component that most people are aware of. Um, and this accessory component of the virus components that we're studying is a viral envelope. You might have heard of this before. A viral envelope is a great, great thing for some viruses that are lucky enough to have them. A viral envelope is going to be something, again, viruses are, are parasitic. They get everything from somebody else, essentially. They come from others, and they use others, and they manipulate others. The envelope is no exception to that rule. The envelope, interestingly enough, is literally acquired um, from the physical moving through because when a virus moves through a cell, it has to move from the inside all the way to the outside. But what's covering the outside of every cell is what? That plasma membrane. So this envelope is actually acquired from moving through a host plasma membrane. So as it moves through the host plasma membrane, it says, oh, this looks pretty important. This looks pretty useful. Why don't I just take some of your plasma membrane and create for myself a lipid bilayer structure on top of my capsid that's already there, on top of the genetic material that's within my capsid, let me just put a lipid bilayer structure all on top of that. Nice wrap, wrapped up virus, let's say. And this lipid bilayer structure will include two major, let's say, key components. And those would be the idea that there will be host phospholipids on this viral envelope that we're looking at, host phospholipids will be here. There will also be host proteins as a result of those phospholipids because again, remember how there are transmembrane proteins and uh, integrated proteins that are within the phospholipid bilayer, that plasma membrane that we've studied before? Well, of course, if you take pieces of that plasma membrane, you're inclined to take whatever is there. And oftentimes, proteins themselves are there along with the phospholipids, again, from the host. In addition, because the host is giving up some stuff, the virus also has its own proteins and glycoproteins that it integrates into this lipid bilayer envelope that it has, and it has acquired through its infectious process. Uh, Viral proteins and glycoproteins will also be there. So it's a complex structure, this envelope, and it's a very important structure that can aid the virus in its work. It's an accessory that helps the virus. So to make sure we understand, genetic material, every virus. Protein coat, capsid, every virus. Envelope, some viruses that are lucky enough. Final thing to understand that I suggest you do, again, we're going to be mentioning figures, figure 19.3, 
great figure to summarize viral structure and all of these components in a nice visual format.